Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in again for another tutorial. My name is Sudabe and I am an independent illustrator and icon designer based in Iran. I am very excited to show you guys today how you can deconstruct anything you want to illustrate into basic shapes, a trick that will make your life so much easier when drawing. You really can take these principles and apply them to draw virtually anything you want. So let's dive in. Let's take the example of this kettle here and compare two drawing techniques. First off, I can try and recreate it by drawing an outline starting from any point. It really does not matter which. Uh, doing this is very really hard to get right because there is very really little reference of perspective and it's more an act of copying something rather than understanding what I, as a viewer, am looking at. So let's try this again using simple shapes. I can see that the main body is made of two rectangles, to which I add the cap and the spout which are essentially two triangles. Then I can see that the handle is also going to be made of various rectangles clustered together. And this really interesting design that kettles have, I will recreate with rectangles as well. Feel free to duplicate shapes if you want to make sure everything is equal in size. But because of the perspective, you'll notice that these shapes are not going to be identical. So you have to edit them a bit. The biggest rectangle will be in the middle and they become smaller and smaller as they curve around the kettle's body. Once I've mapped out all the main shapes, I can just go back to round corners uh, and perfect my lines in order to make it look closer to the original object. But if we look back and compare these two techniques, it's clear that the results are so much better now. Because now I have a much better understanding of the object that I am recreating. And even if I want to create something more complex, like a monkey, the process remains essentially just as simple. So looking at the reference, I can see that I can break down my illustration using ovals. I'll start off by drawing a rectangle that will contain my entire illustration. This will help me with the proportion and distribution. Maybe this happened to you. But did you ever try to sketch something and then you realize just how long you made the torso or how disproportionate you created the arms? This simple rectangle will keep everything nice and neat. Inside, I've drawn the main ovals for the body and the head and I've also added the tail. But now I'm getting into more detail with how the limbs are separated and where the face should be. Even in such a simplistic form, the sketch has already taken so much meaning. I sketch in various ways, but today I have chosen to sketch directly with vectors in Vectionator. For the main shapes, I am using the brush tool with a 7 point thickness and blue color to give it a more pencil look. But uh, when I am actually tracing the final image, I'm using the pad tool. Uh, the best part about working with vectors is that you can change curves and lines by manipulating the nodes instead of erasing and drawing again. While my illustrations are minimal, they are definitely not flat. My objects have a 3D feel achieved by shading and shadows, 
and uh, that is another important factor to understand when using basic shapes to draw. You might need to build on your basic shapes so they are presented in a 3D way. So from squares we get cubes, from triangles pyramids. Try getting to these 3D objects from simple shapes. Once you master this, go a step ahead and cluster various 3D shapes together, like a few boxes together or a cylinder and a box. Just so you have an even better grasp on spatial awareness and how these shapes behave. Learn how to do that intuitively. From here, your next step is to approach these shapes in a more organic way. It's almost impossible to find perfect shapes in nature, so try to distort your object in order to achieve a more believable result. By learning to manipulate shapes and the so-called camera angle, you will be able to replicate them much easier in your illustrations. There are so many ways to manipulate your shapes. But just go with some examples that you see around you first, like this pipe that is bent in a few spots. Remember, I am still working with the primitive shapes here. I'm just bending and twisting them. A practical example is this sandwich bag. It is sorted off like a rectangular paper bag, right? and then it was folded shut. So by doing some studies, I know that this is how this shape is going to behave. Instead of copying how the bag looks, I actually have an understanding of what I'm looking at and how this 3D shape behaves when manipulated. Take this process step by step and you'll learn how to create more and more complex illustrations with time. Practice truly makes perfect. Thanks so much for tuning in everyone. Subscribe to the Victorinator channel and follow them on Instagram. I'll see you in our next video.